Welcome to Wednesday Noonday Bible Class at Santa Rosa, California Community Baptist Church, where our pastor is uh, Reverend uh, Dr. H. Lee Turner. My name is Brother Jim Kennedy, and Sister Marie Dreyer is the one who types these lessons for you to, so you can follow along. So we thank her for that. And we have a good lesson for you today, The Purpose of Humanity. And the uh, scripture reading is Genesis 1, 1 through 5, and 26 through 31. And the point is, God created us to serve and honor him. Amen. So we, uh, we have prayer requests. Uh, <clears throat> um, and uh, we're going to pay for, uh, we first off, uh, read scripture. Read uh, from Proverbs 3, 1 uh, through 9. It says, My son, forget not my laws, but let thy heart keep my commandments. The length of day and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the tablets of thy heart, tables of thy heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not on to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil, and it shall be help to thy neighbor and marrow to thy bone. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with thy first fruits of thy increase, so shall, uh, so shall the barns be filled with plenty, and the presses shall burst out with new wine. May a blessing be to the hearing and reading of Proverbs 3, 1 through 10. Okay, let's follow with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today thanking you and praising you, Lord, for this day. Thanking you for this time we're going to spend in your word, Lord. We ask that the Holy Spirit minister to our hearts as we study your word today. Let the things um, be uh, uh, directed to our minds and, um, and our souls and our body, Lord, that we be glorified by your word and, and also praise you always uh, for your word. Lord, we pray for a prayer request. We got, uh, we pray for our pastor, Reverend Dr. H. Lee Turner and his family. We pray for the CBC staff, ministers, auxiliaries, ministries, teachers, and church family. We pray for Deacon Baldwin Duncan for healing. Noah Sisler for healing. We pray for Johnny Terrell, ongoing heart health concerns. We pray for our sister Pamela Bray and the loss of her husband. We pray for sister Mary and Nelson suffer a stroke. We pray for sister Lisa Bleaton, ongoing health concerns, and our sister Teresa Newsom and family. And um, pray for my sister Dolores and her family. And pray for my son uh, uh, Alan Snyder and his uh, recovery. Lord. Let's, and Lord, we give all these uh, requests to you, Lord, and say that you will be done uh, uh, ours, Lord, and that you would uh, answer them according to your will. We thank you, we praise you, Lord, and we pray in Jesus' name this day. Okay, section two, purpose of humanity. And the point is God created us to serve and honor him. The passage is Genesis 1, 1 through 5, 26 through 31. The Bible meets life. One of my responsibilities around the house is to take out the trash. Let me tell you, I am horrible at it. When I enter the house at night, I can tell by a single look from my wife whether I fulfill my end of the bargain, of that bargain. Sometimes it's not even a look, it's an outright straight to the point question. Did you take out the trash 
rubbish. Taking out the trash is not even a difficult task. The trash bin are right by the back door, but somehow I always manage to forget to do this one simple, obvious thing. As kids, many of us dread responsibilities and we know firsthand that responsibility is handled uh, to us in a great measure as we get older, but responsibility is not a bad thing. God has built responsibility into us. He gave it uh, to us uh, when we put when he put us on this earth. He uh, called it for us for it and gave us the tools to carry it out. It's up to us uh, to recognize what our responsibility is and carry it out. Amen. Genesis 1 to 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Keyword created. Verse 1. In Hebrew word bara describes an activity of making. Uh, when used in the Old Testament, God is always the one performing the creative action. When we want to communicate with an audience, we have to keep three things in mind. What are they familiar with? What do we need to tell them? And how do we bridge the gap between the two? With these things in mind, think about the original audience who would have read Genesis 1. Tradition tells us that Moses probably wrote it, which means the people who first read it were more likely still wandering in the desert after being uh, uh, free from slavery in Egypt. The, <coughs> excuse me. the Israelites had never known a place to call home. They didn't include either the they didn't include either the desert or slavery. What they knew about God has been passed down orally the way most uh, things were passed down in those days. Uh, they taught their children who taught their children who taught their children. And Israel, the Israelites were surrounded by a group of people and settled and established civilization, Egyptians, Canaanites, and Hittites. And these groups were perceived as more civilized than Israelites would be tempted to think and stories of their gods were more established too. Maybe the Egyptians were right. The world was a birth out of a cosmic day, or perhaps they should consider the Mesopotamian beliefs. Mesopotamian beliefs that all we know were created out of the carcass of one of the deceased gods. Genesis 1 reveals a wholly different account, one that quickly cuts to the chase. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It's almost as if the writer were saying, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, listen, I know you're hearing all kinds of confusing things from all kinds of people. Let me tell you about who is really in charge, what he did, and how, how you can know him. The biblical worldview is unique in that not only do we know who created everything, but we can also have a personal relationship with him. Amen. God invites us to have a relationship with him. Through Jesus, we have access to the Father, the creator of the universe. Jesus is a special position uh, to do that for us because not only is he one with the Father, he was actually present at creation. The word Jesus was with God in the beginning in John, for John 1, 1, 2. Let's look at that. John, New Testament, John 1. And one and two says, 
in the beginning the world all and the word already exists the word was with god and the word was god okay and not a single thing that has been created was created apart from jesus and that's in colossians so let's look at colossians Okay, Colossians, so we'll go slowly, I'm trying. Colossians 1, 16 to 17. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they were they be thorns or dominions or principalities or power, all things were created by him and for him. In 17. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Amen. If you if you look up at the night sky, you will see a carpet of stars. Most of them would make our sun look tiny. If you look down below your feet with a microscope, you will see an entire esco, uh, ecosystem of bacteria that uh, works together to make sure plants can grow. God did all that simply by his word and the creator of all of all that has invited uh, us into a relationship with him to know him deeply and to remain in him forever. What impacts you most about the this first uh, day of creation? Uh, well, I, I go from just above there. It says God did all this simply by his word and created all of that has invited us to a relationship with him, to know him deeply and to remain in him forever. So that's, he created this all for us. And, um, and uh, you know, we can know God just by, uh, you know, the things he created. Genesis 1, 26 to 27. And God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air, and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And so God created man in his image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female, created he them. Key word is image, verse 26. Humanity reflects the reflection of God. It cannot be reduced or, or to a less equality. Instead, it encompasses every aspect of our being. Amen. Perhaps you are familiar with the idea of rigid religion icons. And they are small representative figures that people look at to remind them to think about someone uh, as something else. For example, and Chris, uh, some Christians look at the image of the cross and the image caused them to contemplate Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Unfortunately, some people tend to worship an icon rather than the one it represents. Many of us use icons every day. We don't even know it. They are tied to the apps of our smartphone, tapped on a picture of the home screen and an application that launches. The, world, uh, the word for that picture is an icon, an image that points you somewhere else. In Genesis 1, 26 and 27, the word translates image in Hebrew, word uh, salam. Salem, Salem, sorry, Salem. Let's look at Genesis 1.26. No, that, that, the word translate image is a Hebrew word, Salem. The word is used 16 times in the Old Testament and most of the time it is used negatively. For example, then you should drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all the pictures and destroy all the bone image and quickly plucked down all their high places and uh, numbers 33 to two. However, in Genesis one, God was uh, not talking about stone image icon 
our apps and homes. He was talking about us. He said something amazing about how he made us. To be made in the image of God means we were made with something the rest of creation doesn't have. Think about what makes humanity different from, say, the dog lying on the floor or a cat curled up by the window. Our ability to think, reason, and process morality is different. We have the capacity to adapt and tame the land around us. No matter what that looks, the land looks like, but the most unique thing about us is that we were created to be God's representative. Amen. God made everything, but he made humanity with a unique responsibility of being his representative on earth. And that's, uh, that's what, that, that would answer what uh, the next question is, what is significant that we were created in the image of God? And that's to uh, you know, be his representative on earth. And as his image bearers, we were created to rule over the animals and over the earth. The Hebrew word beta is translated have dominion. It means to uh, subjugate, to have dominion, or to reign. Humans made in God's image are capable of thinking, discerning, and making choices as God ruling representative of governing the earth in its place. In caring for God's creation, including his creatures, we should seek to use and not abuse or misuse what God has provided. Amen. God has blessed the use of the planet, uh, renewable and non-renewable nature resource. As God appointed rulers, we should seek his wisdom as we make decisions about the use of the earth resource. If we make decisions selfish and with uh, 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 short sightedness, we cannot expect to have dominion over all the earth with the integrity of the way God intended. God gave all of us the responsibility to care for the earth. At the same time, we are to use the earth resources for the betterment of humanity. Prayer and godly counsel are needed as we seek to rule the earth and its resources with wisdom. Amen. Um, when the world looks at us, when the world looks at us, they shouldn't see people simply living for themselves, but people caring on the highest calling imaginable, displaying the image of God who made us doing everything we can do to bring honor and glory to him. How would you describe the responsibility the human was given as creations? They were supposed to work and take care of the, of the land and also to uh, glorify God, and bring him honor and glory uh, by making a wise decision and not, and, you know, not just to uh, Wasting things, uh, you know. So you know you can answer that too. You know in your own words. Um, Genesis 1, 28, 31. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and then subdue it, and have dominion over the fish in the sea, and over the fowls of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, Behold, I have given you every earth bearing seed upon which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in that which is fruit of the tree yields seed to you, it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was what, very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So he provided everything for us. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Key word, subdue, to bring into subject. However, 
while humans are called to put creation under their authority, this is only possible as they stand under God's authority. As being creatures in his image, God did not just place us in an elevated position to, uh, in creation to sit fast in it. He tasked us with being caretakers and to live in a way that brings honor to him. God gives us three tasks. This could be the answer for the question four. Be fruitful and fill the earth, subdue the earth, uh, relish everything that God made because he made it all to be enjoyed. Amen. We have been tasked with filling the earth and attending to it. But the commands go far deeper than just uh, populating the earth. It is about spreading God's image far and wide. However, these commands did not go away after sin entered the world. We are still in charge of the earth, but after sin, it was required hard work. Ruling over the creatures also come with its own set of unique challenges. The work can be exalted but it can be also very rewarding. God bless us as we take charge of what he's given us and when we do it in a way that honors him. Amen. God not only gives us a direction on what to do, however, he also provides what we need to sustain life. Praise God. Verse 29, 30 points to some ways God has blessed us by listening to plants, seed, or fruit. He provides for food. God is a beloved provider. He has ensured that both humans and animals will have all they need to survive. The self-made person is a myth, but the God blesses per the God blesses a person is a reality because of it is abundant, abundant provisions. Amen. Provides all we need. The word used in verse 31. Her soul carries the idea of looking with an intention of making a judgment. As soon as his creation was complete, he appraised it like a captain looking over his work. He had only one judgment. It was very good. Amen. As we live as Christians in the world God made, we have the op unique opportunity to exemplify the kind of life God created us to be to live. Think of how blessed we are. We get to know our creator in a personal way. We get to care for his creation and we get to be his image bearer. Amen. This realization leads us to see things different. It changes the way we see the people around us. They also were created to be image bearers. It changes the way we see the earth around us. We have been tasked to care for it. Amen. So, and, and it changes the way we see ourselves. We have within us the very markings of a cre um, the Creator give us to represent Him. And then, question five: How do these verses sim uh, summarize our mission and purpose as stewards of God's creation? And then it says that we are engaged, and we can do that. Uh, during the week and then live it out. It says, being made in the image of God is a great blessing and a huge responsibility considering the following steps. Praise. Take a few minutes to thank God for creating you and then thank him for creating you in, the image, in his image. Thank you, Lord. Ask for his help to live out this great privilege and responsibility. Lord, we need your help. Yet more than ourselves, we pray to be given honor to you. Write down a few characteristics that God imagined bearers should have and don't lay yourself on them how you can better represent the Lord. And then uh, this we are to lead others, we are to lead others to know the growth in Christ. The one who restores the sin marred image of God in us. Make a plan to reach out 
to two other people in your life with whom you also begin meeting regularly so that you can help them to be like him. Amen. So that's your challenge today, get two other people and uh, just share the love of God and, and uh, share this lesson with them. We thank you, Lord, for this lesson. And our next one will be the nature of sin. That's section three, and it'll be the one I'm study ahead of time. It's Isaiah 59, 1 through 13. Uh, okay, that will be our next lesson. So let's follow the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lesson. We thank you for being a creator of all things, Lord, and you're, you're providing us with all we need to be on earth, Lord. And we are to be wise to the builders and of the and the maintaining of your your gifts you give us, Lord, that we should uh, bring glory and honor to you in the way we use them and, and apply them to our lives, Lord. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord, that teaches us uh, throughout this uh, uh, day, Lord, that we uh, that he will order, we pray that he will order our steps, that we be followers of Christ, and that we be doing his will and not our will, Lord. Let us be nourished while you increase in our life, Lord, and just uh, reach out for someone, tell them how the love of Jesus can save them from all um, of their sins, Lord, that they can turn to Jesus because he is the salvation, salvation and no other but Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So we thank you for this day and we thank you for this lesson. We thank you for just the Lord teaching us about your creation and you said it was very good and we know it is we thank you we praise you again we pray this all in jesus name amen well have a blessed day and uh, tell somebody about jesus and also study with a couple of other people and i'll share this uh, lesson with them and we'll see you next week